love to welcome Barry Barrett, Director of Training at RLO, Clint White. Uh, Clint White, first time uh, with us, Clint. Uh, glad to have you here. Thank you. Shop Manager and Lauren Giver, Service Advisor from Los Gatos Auto Service in Campbell, California. Want to thank Jasper Engines and Transmissions. You know, Jasper has over 2,000 associates in three manufacturing facilities, two distribution centers, and 45 branch offices all across the country. They're all working hard to produce, transport, and deliver the perfect product. And that's what they do best, keep customers happy so you can keep your customers happy. Okay, everyone. Um, so here's the format. Uh, we're, we're just going to flip around each of my guests who have so graciously said, sure, um, I'll volunteer. I'll, ta I'll take a role. And each one of them are going to have a different role as we progress. They're our first role play, uh, Barry is going to be the customer. Lauren is going to be the service advisor. <clears throat> and Clint is going to have the very difficult duty of being the, if you will, the observer or the coach. And we'll hear from Clint at the end of the role play. Now, guys, as far as when you feel that the, the sale has been done or the objections have been handled or the RO has been signed, you know, don't go on a half hour, but give us maybe a good, maybe seven or eight minutes or it depends on how good or bad the customer is going to be in the service advisor. We have no time frames on this. We have four role plays. We may get through two. We may get through three. We may get through four. We don't know. So here's the first scenario, everyone. And I just so, so hope everyone enjoys this. This is a, we're really stretching out over our, our, our skis here, but I think this is going to be so valuable for the industry. First scenario, the customer is broken down on the road. So Mr. Smith Barry called into a local auto repair facility, Lauren, because his 2001 Dodge Caravan died right after pulling out of the McDonald's drive through <laughs> Just picked up her three elementary, or he just picked up his three elementary aged kids from school and is stranded with no family or friends to call. Now, he doesn't have a mechanic and usually takes his van to a local speedy lube when the bill, when the oil light comes on. Guys, got the timer ready. Have at it. All right. Ring, Thanks, ring. For <laughs> Thanks for calling Los Gatos Auto Service and speaking. How can I help you? Uh, yes, ma'am. I just pulled out of a McDonald's and I, my engine just cut out. I'm still in the parking lot, but it just died. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so Thank sorry you. to hear that. Uh, have we seen you in the vehicle before? Uh, no, ma'am. All right. And I'm sorry, what's your name? My name is Barry, spelled B-A-R-R-Y. Last name is Smith. All right, Barry. Well, thanks for giving us a call today. So have you had any symptoms before the vehicle died or did it just die on you? No, I, you know, it seemed just, to, it was going along fine. I stopped at McDonald's. I just picked up my three kids uh, from mm -hmm. the school. And while I was waiting in line at the school, it, it seemed fine. And then I drove over here probably two blocks away, pulled mm -hmm. into the McDonald's, oh, oh, you know, ordered a couple of Big Macs and it just pulled through the drive through went out and it sputtered and, and died. Oh, I know um, car problems are never any fun to deal with. Uh, Barry, do you have AAA or any kind of roadside assistance? I do not. You do not? Okay. Huh. So let's do this. What I'd like to do is get the van towed in so we can take a look at it, have one of my technicians inspect and test the vehicle, find out what's going on for you. Are there any lights on on the dash? No, usually there's some lights that come on, but when a light comes on, I usually take it to the to the local lube shop over here. I think it's called Speedy Lube, and they okay. usually put their put their attach their equipment to it. They get rid of the check engine light, tell me there's no further problems. So it's worked in the past. All right, fair enough. So yeah, let's definitely inspect it, find out what's going on for you. Uh, since you don't have roadside assistance, what I can do, what I'm going to do for you is facilitate first a tow truck. I'm gonna send that out to come get your car towed into us. And I'm also gonna call an Uber. I don't think a tow truck would be a comfy ride for you and the kids. So let me send an Uber out to get you. Does that sound like a good plan? Yeah, is the Uber gonna cost me anything? No, no, I'm gonna take care of that Uber for you. Oh, fantastic, well, sounds good to me. All right, so Barry, what's a good phone number for you so I can get this all happening for you? It's area code 859-555-5555. Uh -huh. 
Mm -hmm. 3416. 3416. All right. Fantastic. Barry, so tell you what, let me go get in touch with that tow company. Let me get in touch with the Uber. I'm going to give you a call back just in a few minutes. I'm going to make sure that you're taken care of and we'll find out what's going on with the car. Sounds great. Thank you. Thanks, Barry. Talk to you soon. All right. Thanks. Wow. How interesting. Clint, what'd you see there? It was good. It's uh, w one of the challenges is when you, uh, when you bring people onto your show that are really good at what they do, it's good. <laughs> uh, are you saying that um that barry was good or lauren was good well barry's always good there's I, I, yeah. so, lauren that was actually great so um I, yeah. I i can tell that you've obviously been doing this quite a while and you know what you're doing and you're very effective at what you do uh you definitely expressed empathy and concern and the, the tow truck and the uber fantastic that's perfect um I would say the the only critique I could have, and it's small, would be uh, collect the phone number up front or as close to the front of the phone call as possible. Uh, mm -hmm. That's probably one of the challenges I run into a lot is, is poor cell service and we drop a call. And so that would be the only critique I really have. You did a great job. It was awesome. Yeah. Thank you. I have I a agree. question. Um, mm -hmm. Talk to me about the Uber and picking up the Uber <clears throat> cost. What if, uh, what if Barry comes in and he doesn't like the $895 bill you've come up with and he says, no, I'm out of here and you've invested in the Uber for him? Well, you know, that's, that's, that's a risk you're going to have to be willing to take, you know, I mean, especially with a parent, three kids you're not going to want them to be calling around to different shops because they're already in a bad state of mind because their car's broken down. They don't know what to do with the kids. There's no friends or family to help out. So I'm going to do what I can. Yep. I agree with her. And I'm going to introduce some, some things right here to kind of back her, not to kind of back, back her story up with that. So if I think about the greatest companies, I was talking about this morning to a couple of students and I got it written on the board. So Disney, Apple, Starbucks, the Ritz and Nordstrom's, you know what they don't talk to you about? Cost. That little bitty penny any cost. Like <laughs> the Uber's probably going to cost her, I don't know what, eight bucks to let's say it's 20. Yeah. If that, let's say it's 20. It's you, nominal. Wouldn't, you wouldn't pay $20 to get a good qualified customer in that's towed in. Exactly. You, you do. Let's say you lose money on three of those. It costs you $60. You wouldn't pay $60 to get a thousand dollar customer because if it's towed in th four times, it's going to be a thousand dollar bill once. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. So Especially good question. And when that oil lights on. <laughs> so I felt like she did as a customer. I felt very comfortable. She was extremely pleasant. Uh, she rocked one four letter word one time, the, but she changed it. Look is a four letter word to me. And she <laughs> said, look, and then she changed it to inspect and then evaluate. And I'm like, fantastic. Customers yeah. are never going to pick up on the look I do as a trainer, but I can tell she's been trained because she changed it immediately. And the only other thing that I would add, and I picked this up from AAA, because when you call AAA, what's the first question they ask? Are you safe? Mm -hmm. It's the only thing I would add. And, and she didn't do anything wrong. I just, I love that question so much when people are on, broke down on the side of the road. What a great point, Barry. Thank you. That's great. And, and, and I, you know, I, I'm not challenging the Uber idea at all. I, I, I know just, you're not. I, I love the fact that, that you're willing to invest, um, mm -hmm. even if there isn't anything that comes from it, Lauren. And it, it, yeah. it's, you know, the connotation of safety was in the offer of the Uber. What I, what I loved about your question, though, Carmen, and, and, and because you're, you're in, this isn't buttering you up or whatever, but you are a consummate professional. And I knew you weren't challenging it, but your listeners will often have those kind of questions, right? Like mm -hmm. yeah. in the mind of your listener, they're like, well, what is that? Like that's yeah. an extra expense or whatever. So that's good. Yeah, the reality is, is the customer that doesn't have the money to repair their vehicle <clears> and <throat> treat them as though they do, they will tell their people, they will encounter people in their life. And whether it's next week or next year, it's money in the bank to treat everybody with that same level of service and that uh, that's a small advertising cost to spend $20 mm -hmm. to Uber a family in and then even maybe Uber them home when their car is not repairable. Yep. I'll, I'll add into this too. Uh, just as a customer that I was, I never mentioned cost or <clears throat> price one time. So that yeah. also pointed to, it wasn't really my top concern. Yeah. You wanted Lauren, to be taken care of. 
would Lauren have have stopped and said, "Wow, I see you're mobile. You're on the phone. How did you get our number, Barry Clint? Would you have Would you have wanted to know how you got contacted?" I I do ask that question a lot, but when you're encountering somebody that is in a critical situation where crisis has occurred, uh, I can gather that at the counter. I can yeah, I, I can absolutely. I can grab that uh, that information later. That's 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 of little consequence. Makes all kind of sense to me. Thank yeah. you. Oh, anything else? It's the reason I ask, are you safe? Because if they're safe and, and what is his point, if they're broken down, I, I don't ask, how'd you hear about us? I, I make one little small change that I think is a, is a, is a big, is a bigger change. As I say, would you mind sharing with me who referred you? Yeah. Because it's such a more like personal question. If it's Google, they'll tell you, Oh, nobody referred me. It's Google. Right. Mm -hmm. So, but to Clint's point, if someone's broken down, I think it's a bad question until they get there. Got it. Hey, thanks. Uh, thanks. This is great. Uh, lots of learning. Uh, fabulous, fabulous job. Now, role play number two, everyone. Lauren, you'll be the customer. Clint, you'll be the service advisor. And Barry, you'll be the coach observer. Here's the scenario. The customer is dissatisfied with the dealership. Now, Mrs. Brown, which would be Lauren, usually takes... <clears throat> her 2012 Chevy Malibu to the local Chevy dealership for its free oil change that was part of her vehicle uh, purchase package. Her last few visits was the lack of personalized attention and aggressive sales ta tactics have left a bad taste in her mouth. Her Chevy is due for an oil change today and she is looking to make a change in shops. All right. Ring, ring. Good morning. Thank you for choosing Cooper's Auto Repair in Tacoma. This is Clint. How can I help you today? Hi, Clint. Wanted to find out how much you would charge for an oil change on a 2012 Malibu. Yeah, I can definitely help you with that. Who am I speaking with today? My name is Lauren. All right, Lauren. And Lauren, if you don't mind me asking, who referred you to our shop this morning? Well, I actually just found you on Google. Um, I've been taking my vehicle to the dealership for years. You know, I got the free oil change with the car mm -hmm. and I'm not happy with them right now at all. So just kind of shopping around, finding someone who can okay. make you feel a little bit better. <laughs> Sorry to hear about that. Now, Lauren, if you don't mind me asking, what, what leads you to be unhappy with the dealership and their service? So over the past couple years, you know, I just constantly feel like they're just trying to upsell me more. You know, they just want my money. I don't trust what they're telling me. So I just if I'm going to be spending a lot of money, I want to be able to trust someone. Gotcha. I understand. Well, I can tell you here at our facility, we, we do something a little bit differently. We, we do a digital ve uh, vehicle inspection on every vehicle that comes in here for an oil change. And what that does is it, it pinpoints any particular issues that you may have today or potential issues down the road. And what we do is we, we itemize that for you and we help to structure a, a plan to keep your vehicle running safe and reliably. And there's no arm twisting, there's no pushy sales. What we do is we present you with that information so you can make an accurate decision to keep your vehicle running. And we can definitely get you in for an oil change. I've got openings actually this morning or tomorrow morning, which uh, works best for you, Lauren. Well, actually I have another quick question for you, Clint. So on the digital yeah. inspection, does, do you guys provide pictures and stuff? Cause I mean, like I said, with, I, I don't trust the dealership and I want to know that this needs to be done. I don't want to just take someone's word for it. Yeah, absolutely. So our, our, our vision, our purpose with that is to essentially have you with the technician as he's looking at your vehicle. So if there's any anomalies, he'll document that with a picture or a video. And if there's anything that's good, he'll document that with a picture or a video. We really want you to have a clear picture of the condition of your vehicle. This is your car. And uh, we want to make sure that you have the accurate information to make decisions on it. Does that make okay. sense? It does. It absolutely does. And then, so once you guys do the inspection, um, will I be presented with an estimate? So I know kind of what I'm looking at. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we estimate everything that is necessary on the vehicle. And, and Lauren, back to your original question about the cost of the oil change. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can tell you that with our oil changes, we have a package that is every fifth one is free and you get a free one on the week of your birthday. So if you put that all together, you do the math on that, I can guarantee you I will be the most affordable oil change in town. And I think we give the best service. Okay. All right. You said you had an appointment available today? I sure do. Does uh, yeah. 10 or 11 work for you today? See you at 11. All right. Thanks, Lauren. Thanks. N nice job, everyone. Uh, you're in Tacoma. I'm in Buffalo. Now, if I get in my car since it's my birthday week, Clint, 
Carm, I will change your oil today for free. <laughs> you just if have you to can drive make it today. <laughs> Three thousand miles. <laughs> I love it. Great job, Barry. Man, Clint did it. I mean, he 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 was pretty solid. I love, he asked a few things, says, if you don't mind, he asked that twice, if you don't mind, because it's so, I call it Southern nice, like people can't say no to that, they just, they don't mind, okay, fantastic, uh, she said, I don't trust, so he asked this great poignant question, if, would, if you don't mind sharing with me, you know, what kept you from going back to him, what allows you to not go back to the dealership, she said, trust. I don't trust. I don't trust. And I'm like, wow. He, she just told him, I don't trust. Therefore, she's trying to trust, right? So then he put in USP's unique selling points as a differentiator between him and, and the dealership, which was on point. I didn't like that he said no pushy sales. I don't even bring that up until they bring it up, unless they bring it up. Um, if she said, and I like pushy salesperson, he could have said, well, we don't do the pushy salesperson. Here's what we do. So I, I, I tell people never bring up anything. The, the hardest objection to overcome is the one you create. Mm. So if you say pushy and they didn't, you, you are potentially bringing up an objection. Uh, he used looking at the vehicle once uh, when he talked, she asked him about the, the, the pictures. He said, the technician will look at it. I'll, I'll, I'll ding him on that. It's not a <laughs> big deal. It's an, he'll, the technician will inspect it because our words are so important for value. Yeah. And the last thing he did that I didn't like is he went back to her original question of cost. And you say, well, why wouldn't he want to go back to the original question of cost? I wouldn't go back to it unless she brought it up again. And it didn't sound like she was going to. Because I was actually going to, but then he brought it up. <laughs> okay. Yep. I'm so glad he brought most, it up. Most people won't because you've done such a good job of answering her questions here. And the problem with role playing a lot of time with a service advisor is they have the curse of knowledge. So we often don't act like a customer normally would. So she knows all the objections. She knows the inside baseball. So she may bring up the price again because she knows that customers bring it up sometimes, but I'll bet you if you listen to a hundred calls, which I have done in my lifetime, <laughs> more than that, when you get a customer away from that original cost, because of your USPs and all the good things he was doing, they rarely ever ask you for the price again because customers only ask for price because it's the only thing they know to ask. Mm -hmm. And once they know more, they ask better questions themselves. So don't bring price back, in my opinion, don't bring price back up unless they bring it up a second time. And yep, that's it. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Any uh, any observations from you, Clint or Lauren? Um, I I would have to uh, I would not say disagree with Barry, but the sure. the capping of the price um, I, I like I like to do that. At, uh, this that's a very common phone call. I'm, I'm sure that anybody mm -hmm. in this industry knows that. Man, that is how much is it? And it's usually an oil change. That is about the most common phone call we get. And uh, I have found that if I head off at the pass, which naturally will be that last question, well, how much is it anyways? Mm -hmm. So what? You do the DVI. So what? So okay. what? So what? So I have found that if I head that off with our buy four, get the fifth free and the free birthday one, and you do that math, I've mentioned no numbers. You do the math, it's the most affordable oil change in town. Many times it just seals the deal and that's that. And they'll hang up and go, I didn't even get a price. It doesn't matter. I didn't get a price. So that would be my, my uh, rebuttal, I guess. I love it. So I love it because I learned something and I, I like that. So I'm going to start including that. I think that's, that's genius. That is a really good and idea. What, what he just did, it's called a future hesitator. Like he just, you know, it's coming. Uh, in one of my, in my scripts, I, I often put in future hesitators. And so he saw the future because a customer's going to, a future hesitator is anything a customer's going to ask. You, you know, at a 90% accuracy, that they're going to ask it later. So yep. you go ahead and, and cut that hesitator off, but go ahead, Lauren. Sorry. Um, yeah, no, I think that, you know, for oil changes, fifth is free. Um, touching on price. I know for me, I, you know, as with a lot of services by advisors, I don't like to give out numbers, but there are a few numbers that I don't mind giving out basic services oil change you know that's something that's common that's basic I, I can tell you for sure this is how much it's going to cost 
diagnostics. That's another, if you bring your car in with, to me with a check engine light, this is how much it's going to cost for us to test and inspect it. Uh, but past that, I don't like giving price. Yeah. I, uh, my, <clears throat> go ahead, Barry. Go ahead. My question to that is this. Mm -hmm. So if you give a price mm -hmm. and <clears throat> they say, you know, for an oil change, and they're like, mm -hmm. oh, well, I can do, I can have this done so-and-so for half that. What do you do? That's when you start building the value behind it. Tell them how you're going to benefit them. So, um, you know, with the oil change, we're going to do a free health inspection. We're going to take a look at the belts, hoses, tires. We're going to tell you, inform you of any kind of issues with your vehicle before they become much bigger issues. On top of that, all of our repair work comes with a three-year, 36,000-mile nationwide warranty. So we're going to take care of you there. Free loaner vehicles. You just have to build the value behind it and tell them why they should pick you, why they're going to bring your, their car to your shop. Would you ever do a first time match, like first time visitor price match for that oil service? Uh, that's a tough one. I've, I've never thought about that before. It, it, Maybe, maybe not. I, I don't know. Okay. It depends, you know, maybe after qualifying the customer, like, is this a customer that will bring their car back to me continuously? Sure. Yeah. Why not? But if it's someone who's just looking for the cheapest deal, probably not. I can so tell you along that same question, yeah. Barry, along the same question of price match. I, I don't with oil changes, but I, I do with our uh, pre-purchase inspection, which is a DVI. It's, it's, it's an amazing process and an amazing product. And I tell people this, they can, people call around for pre-purchase all the time. And mm -hmm. we're, we're on the higher end of the spectrum for price. And I tell them that what we do is so amazing. If you're not amazed by our, our service, I'll give it to you for free. Love and they it. come down every time. And I've never Love given it. one away for free yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, Clint, you just kind of segued into what my observation takeaway was. And Lauren, as the customer said, are you going to take digital pictures? Mm -hmm. And um, to me, that was, here's my observation. Lauren, you're an insider. So that was a question from an insider. But it, <laughs> I think we have to observe that statement and say that as DVI continues to become the norm in our industry, the consumer one day may say, you're going to take pictures. The last shop took pictures. And, and I think it's, a, it's such an important point to bring up that the, of the value of digital vehicle inspections, a uh, very tiny segment of the industry is doing it. And, you know, this, and, and more and more. If you weren't an inside, if she wasn't such an insider, Clinton, and she said to you, are you going to take pictures in this DVI thing? <laughs> wouldn't you have been surprised? At this point in the game? Yes, absolutely. There are very few shops doing it. I don't have new customers walking in expecting it. Not yet. <laughs> that's my, that's, that was my point. I thought that was, that to me, that was the, the way out there <laughs> statement to me. You take pictures? Well, we actually get that question here because a lot of the shops around our area do use the digital inspections. Yeah. And so pictures are normal. Good. And so I've actually had that call Good. or that question from new customers. So currently competitive advantage, way out there competitive advantage. And then someday it's going to be, if you're not doing it, customers are going to expect that if they're going to ever change their loyalty, their trust from one shop to another, you've got to be able to duplicate what the other people are doing. Love it. Thank you all so much. Hey, um, in addition to the strict quality remanufacturing steps that they take at Jasper Engines and Transmissions, they can actually improve a drivetrain's components original design so that it runs longer and better than when it was new. Check out their featured engine and transmission pages at jasperengines.com. Thanks, Jasper, for allowing us to, uh, to do this fun, exciting show for you each and every Friday. And our, our first role play Service advisor role play ever. Now here's role play three. You guys ready for this? All right, now here's the different roles. The customer now is Clint. The service advisor is Barry, and the observer is Lauren, the, the coach, the observer. And here's the scenario. Uh, let me see, our customer is Clint. Mr. Jones, <clears throat> Mr. Jones calls a local auto repair shop, which would be Lauren, to inquire about having, oh no, that would be, that would be Barry. Um, 
Uh, I'll start again. Mr. Jones calls a local auto repair facility to inquire about having a part he purchased at a local parts store installed. Mr. Jones drives a 2007 Hyundai Elantra and the check engine light came on recently. The parts store performed a diagnostics in the parking lot and the fault code was a P0441 and they had happily advised him that he needs a new purge valve, which they gladly sold him. Okay, gang. All right. Ring, ring. Thank you for calling Arlo Training. This is Barry. How may I help you? Hey, yeah, I, I got a 2007 uh, Hyundai, and uh, I, I, I got a part for it that I need to put on. It's a valve, and I was wondering if uh, you could tell me how much it would cost to install uh, that part for me. I can help you with that, man. Get your name and number just in case we get disconnected. Sure. My name is uh, Clint, and my number is 208 Five 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 one two three four. Your last name, Clint? Jones. Jones. Nice to meet you, Mr. Jones. May I call you Clint? Absolutely. Thank you. W would you mind sharing with me really quick uh, who referred you to us? Well, actually, I was on, on Google, and I was looking for a shop that was close to my house. Did you happen to see our reviews? I did. They're, they're pretty Im impressive, actually. You've got a lot right. of five-star reviews. Let's be honest. They're the best in town, right, Mr. Smith? It sure looks like it. That's why you're my first call this morning. <laughs> well, we appreciate it. You know, our customers, their customers are so good to us, and we really appreciate it and really want to help you get happily involved in our, in our, our shop here. Um, let me ask you a question. They, you said they, they pulled the code on it? No, no, they did a diagnostic for me. Okay. Would you be surprised to know that 70% of what we see that comes in here is either misdiagnosed or underdiagnosed, even, even from a dealership? Well, I, the guys at AutoZone, they, they know cars because they sell parts there. So I'm pretty sure right. it's accurate. And I can understand that. So when they did a diagnostic, what, what did the procedure look like? Oh, they, they, they used their diagnostic machine on it and they plugged it in. I saw them do it. The magic box? Yeah, well, sure. Yeah. yeah. We, we call that the magic box around here. And so we can actually do the same thing via a cell phone. I can take my, my, my cell phone, hook it up here to your car and it'll pull those codes. Now I'm going to, if you'll follow me really quick, uh, Clint, I can show you how this can get misconstrued a, a, a little bit. Can I, can I, would you mind if I shared that with you? I guess go ahead. Okay, so it's like a zip code. If I told you my zip code was 40515, could you find my house? Well, well no, of course not. No, you, you couldn't. So, but if I told you my street address minus the number, I told you I lived on Tykes Pass in Lexington, Kentucky, 40515, you could get close, but you still wouldn't find it, correct? Sure. But if I gave you my street number and my street address, and my zip code, you'd find it just like that, right? Yep. Those codes are just like an area code. They tell you what system they're in, but you have to have the rest of the information. So we have sophisticated diagnostic equipment in here. Shoot, we got one piece of equipment that costs twelve thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and and we have ASC certified technicians that go through a minimum of fifty hours a year of training just to identify the proper things. Now, I can understand and appreciate those guys down at, down at uh, the parts store, but what they don't go through, they don't buy $10,000 piece of equipment for that, and they don't have that level of training. So if I, we decided a long time ago to build our, our name on trust alone. Does that make sense? Yep. And if seven out of 10 times you came in here and it was misdiagnosed, we're inadvertently misleading you, and that doesn't scream truth, does it? Mm-mm. No, so, no, it doesn't. And you wouldn't want to do me that way, would you? No, no, we just met. So can we go ahead and get that evaluated, set an appointment, do that properly, and just do that professionally so we can identify? That's why I need to have an ASC certified technician run a series of tests and procedures, isolate that issue, and then properly inform you on how to move forward. Does that make sense? Yeah, so if, if you do that testing and, and you find out that the, the part I need is that valve that I bought, uh, can, can you install that for me? Well, let me ask you this. Uh, what kind of warranty did they agree to that for? Oh, it's got a lifetime warranty on it. All their parts do. Parts and labor? No, just the, there's know? no labor, just the parts. So let me ask you a question. If you brought that valve down here and I installed it and it was dead on arrival and I had to charge you again to replace it, how would you feel about that? 
I, I guess that wouldn't work out very good now, would it? So what we do is we put a three-year warranty on it, parts and labor. So if it fails over the next three years, we go ahead and replace that no charge. Let me ask you this. Can you take it back? Yeah, I have the receipt. I can return it. Well, I'll tell you what. Don't do that. Bring it down. We'll run a series of testing procedures. We'll help you return it so you don't have to make the extra trip. And then we'll provide our part on there and then give you that warranty. Fair enough? Sounds good. When's good for you, Friday or Monday? I can drop it off Monday. Morning or afternoon? Uh, morning. We have an 835 and a 914 available. Which one would you prefer? 835. All right, fantastic. Now we hold those spots specifically for people. Uh, and if you are late or, or need to reschedule that for any reason, would you mind giving me a call? Sure. Hey, I'll see you at 835 on Monday. You have a great week. Thank you. All right. Nice job, everyone. Uh, wow. Uh, Barry, you, you're just an old smooth man. Is he smooth or what? He could talk a starving dog off a meat wagon. I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I say that in love. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> okay, Lauren, what'd you see? Um, well, I mean, I, I really like the way that Barry phrases his questions. You know, would you mind? Would you be surprised? You know, it's it's engaging the customer. It's not let me tell you this or you know, just telling them things. It's making them more involved. Um, I really like the way that you compared pulling codes to zip codes. If you look up a zip code, can you find my exact address? Because oftentimes we see it a lot. Customers say, I have this code. It's like, yeah, that doesn't tell me much. So making that analogy really helps the customer think, oh, okay, maybe they need a little bit more than just a code. Um, for me personally, as a customer, if you're telling me that you spend $12,000 on equipment, I'd roll my eyes and say, I'm, I really don't give a flying fart, you know, what are you going to do to help my car? Um, that's really the only critique that I have, but I mean, yeah. you're very, you're very much a people person, very well-spoken, you know, you've been doing this a long time or, or role-playing for a long time. So I really like the way that you phrase your questions. And that's something, you know, after being in your training before and on the last podcast, when you chimed in, you know, I, I like to pick up a lot of this from you because it's good. Yeah. I used to like the 12,000, like what that does is build value. And, and so when you talk to a customer and if they don't care, they might share with you what, what that is, but I use that. And then training, mm -hmm. um, the, the $12,000 expresses the level of sophisticated equipment. And so, yeah, that's a good feedback. And so it, it might be considered like taking that out because I might be able to just build it with the 50 hours of training instead of the equipment. But I wanted to, I, I want to, if, I'll tell you this, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. If not telling you how much it costs, how would how might a better way to explain the quality of the testing equipment be? My technician or you can you know talk about how many years of experience your technician has. Um, okay. But I also need to 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 give you the level of 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 equipment that we have though, right? Like mm -hmm. it's a twofold <clears throat> thing. It's like we have this level of testing equipment that doesn't exist at O'Reilly's or, or mm -hmm. our store, right? So the, it's a USP, it's a unique selling point. So if it's not money, and a dollar amount is the best way I've ever found to describe how great a piece of equipment is because, mm -hmm. you know, you, you spend $1,000 on a phone, it better be, you know, have more communication power than Reagan had, which it does. <laughs> so that's the question is like, if it's not how much you spent on the equipment, how mm -hmm. else do you describe the sophistication of the equipment? Yeah, that's a great question, Clint, uh, Lauren. Any any idea on how you how you sound sophisticated versus this little handheld device that the parts store may hook up? I think um, Barry did a good job uh, at 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 doing that. I, th I think that the planting the seed of doubt is is huge in this scenario because to the average consumer the the magical box that was plugged in at the parts store it could have cost twelve thousand dollars it did something for them that they could not do uh, they could not pull a code they have an orange light that glows on their dash and it makes them worried and somebody gave them an answer uh, as well as with my twelve thousand dollar scanner and my highly educated technician i can give you an answer as well 
it's just an answer. And that's what they're looking for. So you have to differentiate between the two. Um, using using analogies is a, is a fantastic one. Uh, you know, if you if if I had a doctor that would do the same surgery in an alley using barbed wire and razor blades, or your own, you know, your own doctor in his office, he can both both of them can accomplish the same thing. It's the, the quality of service, the level of uh, expertise that's represented with that. So just keep pointing back to the USPs, right? That's good. Absolutely. I appreciate the feedback. I heard another great uh, analogy like you did for the zip code, uh, Barry, uh, for, you know, someone hitting a home run in, into the left, uh, left field stands. And if you're, if you're observing from a distance, you see the ball went into left field. But if you were actually the person that caught the ball sitting in row Z seat seven, <laughs> you got it. That's where your problem is or that, that's, that's where mm. – same, same analogy. I loved it. That's good. Uh, very, very good job, uh, everyone. Uh, you know, how many times has a customer said that a new vehicle may look and smell nice, but the reality is that they come with seemingly endless monthly payments, higher license fees, and higher insurance premiums. The better solution, remanufactured components from Jasper, means a new lease on life for your customer's trusted old friend. Thank you, Jasper. Role play number four. We actually have time to do role play number four. Uh, Barry, you're going to be the customer. Service advisor is going to be Lauren, and the observer co coach will be Clint. And uh, here is here is Mr. Wilson. Uh, Barry, you're Mr. Wilson. You've got a 2006 Ford F-150 with a 5.4 liter engine. The check engine light has been on for a very long time, and it recently started flashing, and the engine runs rough and sounds bad. You have consulted Dr. Google re regarding the 12 fault codes that are stored, and he is convinced that replacing the cam camshaft position sensors will cure his ailing truck. So, Barry, as the customer, you've got to be headstrong on that, okay? <clears throat> you're, you're, you're not going to give up. You know better. <laughs> so, uh, let's go. Ring, ring. Los Gatos Auto Service, this is Lauren speaking. How can I help you? Hey, Lauren, this is uh, Barry, and I've got a, a, a Ford F-150 that I've had for uh, about 15 years, mm -hmm. and I've got a problem on it. I need to know how much to, how much to fix it for. All right, Barry. So, well, hey, thanks for giving us a call today. Have we seen you in the vehicle before? Uh, no, I've never been there. Gotcha. And can I ask how you heard about us? Um, my... I was looking on Google because I, I actually Googled the problem and mm -hmm. I, 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 know, I know exactly what's going on with it and what, what the problem is. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's got, it had a check engine light for the last three years and okay. the, the, the place that I can get my oil changed on it, they told me never to worry about it. They, they make it go away. They said, Hey, next time you're in, we're just going to keep making it go away. They said, it's not a big deal. It's probably an EVAP leak or something like that. So mm -hmm. I, I I've never worried about it. So right now the check engine light has started to flash and the engine is running rough. It, it, it's kicking and bucking like an old horse I had about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I looked at Google, they have 12 fault codes, and how much to fix that? Well, Barry, let me ask you this. Um, how long has the check engine light been flashing for? Oh, yeah. I mean, ever since yesterday. Ever since yesterday. And have you been driving a lot with the flashing check engine light on? Well, just through my, my horse farm, you know, I, I let it sit and all that good stuff. I, I actually will let it run when we're dealing with the horses. Mm -hmm. We actually just, it, it sits a lot. So that, I think that might be part of it like because it just has to be cleaned out because all the heat gets up there but mm -hmm. yeah I mean it's been it's been flashing for a little bit okay all right well it sounds like you've done your research so Barry now would you be surprised if I I told you that the flashing check engine light is your car trying to tell you that something's happening with it well I figure that that's what I got 12 codes on there and, and if you could just fix those 12 codes I think that that, that would do it how much would that be well, Barry, you know, I'd be more than happy to help you with that. Now, with the 12 codes, it's, to be honest, it's really difficult for me to tell you what's going on with the vehicle. Uh, it could be any number of things that are causing it. Um, but what I'd like to do is take a look at the vehicle and just have my technician inspect the 
codes, find out what's going on with it, do some full testing and inspection to give you a solid answer to tell you exactly what's going on with it. And I understand that you've done your research, which is absolutely wonderful. So when you bring the vehicle in, if you can provide all of that to us, that's just going to help my technician fit, be able to tell us what's going on with the vehicle that much sooner. So is there any way we could arrange to have your vehicle towed in and we can inspect it for you? How much is that going to cost? Well, I can tell you that to inspect the vehicle, it's going to cost $150. All right. And the tow? Uh, the tow? Let's see. Do you have AAA or roadside assistance? Uh, no. No? All right. Well, let's get a tow arranged for you. Um, I'm not sure of the cost of that, but tell you what, I'll get that covered for you and we'll find out what's going on with the vehicle. All right. And 150 bucks, that's going to fix it? It's not going to fix it, but it's going to tell us what we need to do to fix it. That's hiring a cat's back. It, it may be, but, you know, it's, it's what we need to do to really find out what's going on with the vehicle All and right. fix it I'll properly. It. If you're going to tow it, I'll go ahead and do it. Yeah. All right. So, Barry, can I get a good contact number for you? Yes, ma'am. It's 859-555-3416. All right, fantastic. So Barry, I'm going to go ahead and get in touch with the tow company. Let me see if I can get that arranged. I'll give you a call back shortly and we, we'll get it towed in. All right, thank you. Thanks, Barry. I'll talk to you soon. You're welcome. <laughs> You're muted, Colin. You're muted, Colin. Hey, before we go, I'm sorry, before we go any further, uh, I love when people every once in a while to come out with it higher than a cat's back. And, and you know, I, I would totally have lost it, Lauren, if I was. <laughs> she did awesome. Yeah. yeah she, it, she threw really. me. it threw me. <laughs> well, I, you know, I've done a lot of service advisors in, in service advising in Kentucky. Look, you get those people. Good job, Lauren. <laughs> you oh, it's so great to see Rena. She came I in on you. Uh, I love it. You snuck in on hers. She snuck in on yours, Barry. I love it. That's good. I like it. <laughs> Say hello to Rena. I love it. Yeah, you stick around, Rena. <laughs> so, yeah, you, you know, you get a lot of people like that. Like, you, they're old country boys. And I, I was actually giving you a real scenario of a veterinarian that we serve. Ah, no. Okay. Oh, very good. Very good. Uh, yeah. I, I, we're going to ask Clint to do the observation here. Clint, what'd you, what'd you see? So Lauren, you did a great job. Um, I, I didn't, I did notate a couple of things. So you did say, look again, which Barry went over uh, a series of tests and procedures being performed by an ASC certified technician is a, is a great uh, alternative to look. Uh, it's a horrible habit to, to break. I, I still, to this day, I'm still challenged with, yeah, we'll just take a peek at it. We'll take a look at it. So uh, I would encourage uh, uh, working on that one. Uh, I love the fact that you acknowledged the research that the technician or the, excuse me, that the, uh, the customer did. Uh, mm -hmm. People are savvy and Dr. Google, although misleading it many times, there's a lot of information online. And that is one of the things in this industry that we have to encounter. And we also have to acknowledge is that I do have customers that come in that have done their fair share of research. And if you make them out to be uh, ill-informed or make them feel stupid, uh, you're going to lose. Now you have to be able to plant the seed of doubt without without insulting, without making them feel right. like a, like an idiot. So, uh, and, and I love the fact that you cover the toe. Uh, that's, uh, that's, a, that's another, just, uh, another expense that, uh, you stand to lose, but you also stand to gain. So I, I, I like that and give you kudos. for Okay. That. So let, let me, let me stop and ask a question that I know my audience wants to know. Lauren, great. You covered the toe. I get it. I like that. I was surprised by it. I felt warm by it. Barry, Clint and everyone, uh, the risk, uh, does it minimize the risk of after the $150 diagnostic fee and you find some serious issues with the vehicle uh, because you covered the tow, is, is there a greater chance that the, you're going to get a yes for repair? I would say, I would say, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't have any research on it or anything like that. Um, I would say it's a good thing. I've covered the toe for people before. Um, I, early in my career, before I had any service advisor training or anything like that, because uh, I had years of sales training, but I told a lady that, hey, look, I'll, I'll facilitate the toe and I'll, I'll do, the, do the test. 
And if it's the alternator, I told her, I'll pay for the tow and the test for you. Now we were only open like <laughs> six months. I had never worked in the automotive repair business, had no clue. Um, it's where the 70% was born because I started doing the research about what was right, what was wrong after that. But she did. We, we, she was calling around for her husband and we got her, I, I got her in the, in the, in the, in the shop. We ran the test. It was a battery. So she had to pay the tow. She had to pay the, <laughs> she had, to, she had to pay the test and it was still cheaper than any price that she had gotten for an alternator. So it worked out. But uh, now I, I know yeah. better. Yeah, uh, diagnostic. I, I wrote down while you guys were doing the role play. I wrote down um, cell diagnostic time, and then all of a sudden, I wrote it down, and boom, Lauren just she just opens right up and 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 offers it. And but I didn't hear you say. And and here's my question to the team: Should you have said yes? That's going to cover an hour's worth of diagnostics time. No, mm-hmm. you never ever 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 talk to a customer in time unless you tell them how long something they can expect maybe something to take as far as an oil service. Like this could take up to this much time. Do you have that kind of time? But when it's compared to money, you always build it on value. Now, the only thing that I would have probably done different is build. You don't give a price until you build extreme value. Um, I tell people that you should never give a price over the phone if you can help it. And I tell them how you know you can help it. And this is something I'm very cautious about because if I give you an out, you will take it. And then you will tell me that it's that situation every time. And then I'll listen to a call and I'm like, that situation didn't happen. Let's review it. So (laughs) this is the out. If they ask you three times for a price, that's the only time I tell people that you should give a testing price. But if you can get them away from it by asking calibrated questions, you know, calibration is if you take a rifle and you, you, you know, I was in the Marine Corps, you get the front sight tip and the rear sight aperture and you calibrate the, 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 the round, you ask calibrated questions in the same way. But if you ask well calibrated questions, you should be able to get away 90% of the time away from any price shoppers. But if they ask you three times, I say it again, three times, you are are allowed to give a testing price. Excellent. Uh, Keith Perkins uh, says this, a diagnostics is free. The testing and inspection is what they pay for. Create value in your testing and inspection time. Print your test results. Take pictures. Print wave forms, et cetera. Thank you for that, Keith. Always great to have our contributors uh, in our audience on Zoom. Um, Rena. Wow, Rena Rennerbarn from the Act Group is here. And uh, you know what? I was actually thinking about that this morning, the way Barry crashed your thing. And I was saying it would be the coolest thing if Rena showed up and all of a sudden through some kind of magic, I can't believe this, you're here. Uh, nice, nice to see you, Rena. Thank you so much. Um, boy, this was great. Now, I guess what I'd love to know from our audience, uh, this, the, learning, the learning curve here was just huge. Uh, to the audience, interested in more of these because we can continue to create scenarios. We can have our same group on. We could have different people on and continue to get different style uh, input and feedback on a service advisor role play. I, I just don't think the industry can get enough of this. I just don't think. So you can get you can you can see uh, co- email me uh, question at remarkableresults.biz or carm at remarkableresults.biz. I'd love to hear from you. Hey, uh, we're we're done. We're at the end. But you know, give us a a minute summary from each of you as to uh, what you learned and any other advice that we possibly could give to the industry. Clint, I'll start with you. Uh, Carmen, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity just to, to be here and to, uh, to do what we do. I love this. I love the opportunity to teach. And I would say uh, parting comment would be uh, an adaption from uh, one, one of my favorite books. Uh, that the people who are exceptionally good in the business that they're in, they aren't so because of what they know, but because of their uh, insatiable need to know more. Um, the, the, the book E-Myth, which is just amazing, um, has – 
we, we have to pursue knowledge, pursue and hone and train. And, and this is what we're doing right here in front of an audience is, is flexing our, our sales muscle, flexing our phone skills muscle, keeping it sharp, keeping it strong. So if you're in this industry, I would compel you to continue to do that. Excellent. Thank you, Clint. Lauren, I'll give you your last word. Okay. Uh, can't hear you. Can't hear you at all. Can't hear you. Or I don't know if you're on mute or, or not. She's putting her headphones back on. Yeah. No, I took off the headphones so Rena could hear, but apparently there's no mic on this computer. So, all right. um, no, I mean, I think this is a really valuable tool. I know for me, I'm trying to improve myself every day and going through these kind of practices are, um, you know, something that really point out where there's room for improvement. It's, it's about building better habits and really thinking about, you know, how the customer is hearing it and what the customer needs. So really um, valuable. Thank you so much. Make, make sure you give Rena a hug for me. Okay. I just want to say one thing. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Hi. I just want to say, you know, if you can do it in a role play, because this is like you're more nervous than any other time in your life when you're role playing. Yeah. If you can do it now, you can do it in real life better than ever. So Great. challenge yourself to be in these super uncomfortable situations, and in real life, you're gonna, you'll do even better. Yeah, I guess that's why actors uh, rehearse and rehearse and rehearse and musicians <laughs> rehearse and rehearse and rehearse. So it's natural. It, it just flows. Yeah, I'll give it back to Lauren. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thanks so for much. Nice to see you, Rena. And Barry, you've got the last word. Well, happy 32nd birthday, Karn. Oh, yeah. Thank <laughs> you very much. You're 32, right? Going yes. on 33. Yes. look a day over 20. Right. <laughs> so I, I love learning, like, to Clint's point, um, I think that a lot of times, especially being a, a teacher, we act like, like I, I see people act like they can't learn something new. And I'm like, man, I try to take away from every class that I do or every session with a new takeaway with whatever feedback that I got. So I got two, two feedbacks. One from Clint was I'm going to start implementing the, the fifth oil change for free and telling my customers to do that because the, the ROI of that is, is, is crazy good. And you get them for five visits. So you're basically getting them for a year and a half to two years down the road, right? So, they, so they're bought into that. <clears throat> the thing that I took from Lauren is find, we're going to find a way, and I've challenged Lauren to do this, we're going to find a way to bring value to the sophisticated equipment that we have, the high level of equipment we have without price. So you've challenged me on that. So I'm going to do those two things. I'm going to find a way for that. And I'm going to start incorporating this uh, fifth oil service for free. And that is fantastic. Uh, I had a, I had a question on that $12,000 piece of equipment um, guys. Mm -hmm. that, what, that did it sound like it would he, he was bragging? Mm, no, I, and, and I'm biased because I'm in the industry and I know what it's worth and I know the value of it. Yeah. Uh, but it could, it could be misconstrued as uh, mm -hmm. my, my machine's bigger than yours. Possibly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. <laughs> That's Your what I was thinking. Bigger than mine. <clears throat> that, <Indeed>. that, <laughs> as a consumer, that would not have impressed me to have someone okay. drop a number like that. And, okay. and by the way, Barry, I'm, I'm the, I'm not an expert and it's probably worked a lot for you, but I, you know, if there was this one big takeaway of mine, um, it would be, um, uh, thank you all so much for, for this. Um, uh, this was just fabulous. The learning curve was great. And um, I want to do it again. Let's do it again. I want to do it again. Hey, you all have a great weekend. Thanks for being here on the Town Hall Academy.